now it's just after half past ten here on LMFM and continuing our Thought Leaders series we're joined today by Bernadine Quinn the Project Coordinator with Outcomers a support and friendship organisation for gay and lesbian people all over the North East region. Bernadine was one of the co-founders of the organisation in 1993 and campaigned in these difficult circumstances of the time to get funding for the group premises and a bit of understanding and support from the wider community. Good morning Bernadine, you're very welcome. Good morning Orla, thanks for having me. 1993 was a very different world to the one we're living in today. It must have been tough for you back then. Tell us how it all got started. Well, yeah, it probably was closer to 95 but 93 it was decrim- uh, homosexuality was decriminalised. Um, so I suppose there was a, a huge change for the lesbian and gay community across Ireland at that time Um, when because prior to that anybody entering into a a same sex relationship of any kind were were a criminal so um, I was I was in my um, late 20s at that time and I was looking to meet other lesbian and gay people in Dundalk and it was a very very difficult thing to do so actually there was a group in Drogheda uh, a lesbian and gay group meeting in the um, resource centre, in the employment resource centre on the Keys here in Drogheda. And I came up to that. And a lot of the people at that group were from Dundalk. So that's where I met my people from Dundalk. And uh, for about two years, we met on a regular basis. And um, it was just really a meet up and chat. And uh, it was an entirely different time. It was very anonymous. Nobody knew we were using the space. Um, people were terrified to come in. People wouldn't cross the door. You were creeping around corners, in other words. Absolutely, mm. yes. It was... Um, it, it, I suppose it was a mindset of the time that thankfully is, you know, is completely leaving us behind but just now. just feeling that you couldn't Absolutely. be open yes, about of course, your, your lives. You couldn't yeah. be yeah. because you'd spent, people had spent so long not being able to, or, or would it been against the law? But even, you know, if you, if you ignored, if you like, for want of a better term, the law, the people's opinions of lesbian and gay people at the time were, you know, was were, were terrible. So um, there was a lot of soul searching and a lot of trying to change hearts and minds and speak to people like minded people and getting support from people who uh, as we call them uh, straight but not narrow people who would support lesbian and gay issues who were not necessarily lesbian or gay so there was a lot of across the country there was a lot of winning hearts and minds and finding allies and people who would work with us and support us and um, that happened uh, you know it, there, there, there was a lot of people working in the areas of social support and people like the people in the resource centre here in Drogheda and different, it, the HH, it wasn't the HSC at the time, it was the North Eastern Health Board and places like like that where we found allies, people who were willing to support I us. I love that term you describe straight but not narrow and that clearly was a big educational thing you had to do. You had to yeah. educate the wider yeah. community. I think, I think that um, a word I really, really don't like is ignorance. But I think that it's not really a hatred of lesbian and gay people. It's absolutely not never having met somebody, not knowing them. So it's kind of an ignorance towards what being lesbian or gay is. I think it might be a kind of a helpless ignorance as yes, opposed to a deliberate absolutely. ignorance. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's, it's a, I don't know what a better word is, but it really is a case of, it's not a case of people absolutely hating lesbian and gay people. It's more a case of people just not knowing not understanding, thinking that it is all about sex, because at the you know across many years in in Ireland it focused a lot on sex and on men having sex and stuff like that, and so that kind of took away from that we're people that were parents that were sisters brothers daughters that we have mothers and fathers that we have family, and it, so it's a, it was about trying to get the image of being real people out there and not. You know, it's it. We we're a lot more than just sex or people who have sex with people of the same gender. So, I think that it that was, in some cases, you were pushing an open door. It was very very easy to to people understood and people thought. You know, people that had family members who it was never spoken about. So we had a lot of cases of people coming up to us and saying, you know, I have a niece, I have a brother, I have my sister. I never was able to say this, but I have an aunt or whatever, you know, the case may be. So there was a lot of people who had somebody in their families who was lesbian, gay. uh, And um, because of that, they 
you know, they would go, we understand that it's much more than do just being... Do you think that anything has changed in the last 20 years since you set up? Or do you think that much has changed? I, I, I would accept that society has moved considerably from there to there. Yes. But what more has to be done? Or, or do you find your members are still suffering in some way from lack of understanding or for lack of acceptance? Well, I would say I'm I'm 17 years involved with, with Dundalk Outcomers and I still see young people today who are thrown out of their homes because their parents don't accept that they're lesbian or gay. I see young people with serious mental health in, is, issues because they're lesbian or gay and their fear of their family not being able to accept them. L- you, you know, like human nature, we all want to be loved and we all want to be accepted and when you have a mum and dad and that, you want to do them well and you want to do them proud and and there's a huge pressure on young people who are lesbian or gay to on, on it. Sometimes it's not young people. It can be a mother. It can be a mother who's ashamed of her life that her kids will find out about her. It can be a dad. So it can be across the board. Um, somebody who the pair, I suppose to say that we have stood still is completely wrong. But I st- we have moved hugely but I still see the issues that personally came up for people 14 years ago still come up today. It's about acceptance from your family. It's about your parents loving you regardless. I saw a picture uh, recently sitting in the hairdressers where I do a lot of my good thinking but (laughs) reading an article about a young lad of 16 or 17 and the pictures of him as a very serious and morbid anorexic because he couldn't come out to his family and he eventually did when he was 18 after months in rehab and all of this and found it was fine. They were quite mm-hmm. accepting. So all yeah. this fear he had had that led to this dreadful, dreadful anorexia mm-hmm. was actually unfounded. They yeah. actually were quite a loving, supportive yeah. family. And, you see, and I thought, how sad was yes. that? Because it's it, the crazy thing about it is is that it, it's a personal thing. It's we like for me what I, how I try to describe it. And it's really, really hard. Try to be a straight person in a gay world is probably the best way I can describe it, where you never, ever see an image that identifies you. You never really hear a conversation that identifies you. You never really hear anything accepting about yourself. You go through a school system that doesn't recognise you. You live in a home where, in some cases, we hear things like, my father, as soon as something comes on, put that off, that gay stuff, all of this kind of stuff. So there's a very clear message that it's not okay to be if you'd like to change the, the, the game, it's not OK to be heterosexual. I was in Dublin a few weeks ago and I was walking down O'Connell Street and I was saying, I'll just try to see how many heterosexual images I see between here and the spire, walking from Matthew's coaches. Unbelievable. Like the cinema, all the pictures in the, uh, of people in the cinema or guy and girl, all the, the trailers for the films are guy and girl on the buses female and male in a chemist shop picture of a man and woman uh, so I, you never ever ever can identify yourself so you don't know what you look like and if, when you are dealing with that and you have nowhere that you've seen anything positive about yourself and you hit 15, 16, 17 you start to realise that there's something about you that isn't recognised anywhere and where it is recognised, it's usually recognised in the negative, where it's not addressed in SPHE in, school, in some schools, it's not ad- addressed at all, maybe in sexual education, it's not addressed at all at home, it's, it's, so there's nowhere. And maybe there's somebody in the, in the area that's lesbian or gay and parents would stay away from there, don't be, that, don't be you know, this kind of thing. I, I understand what you're saying. Can you understand the reservations the wider community would have about it when you say that you never see yourself reflected, that you might be able to educate the wider community to the point where, as you say, they're no longer going to be narrow straight people, they're going to be broad minded straight people, mm-hmm. but that they can't quite make the next move, which is that what you've described as on advertising billboards or hoardings, which would, to their mind, normalise. And that's mm-hmm. the move that they can't make. That's the next step. They might be very accepting of somebody they work with or somebody their neighbour or their friend, but to take that big next jump is the next ask. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Um, I. I think when you live in this world, no, it's not easy to understand because I use exactly the same services as everybody else. So I go to the doctor and I don't see myself represented in a GP surgery. I don't see anything that says to me, um, you know, like I saw this really good sign for a GP surgery in the UK and it says you don't have to tell us that you're lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender, but you can. 
it, all that says to me is that somebody in the surgery has experience or has met somebody or has had a, has read a piece of paper or has had some kind of a conversation around LGBT issues 